Integrated Math 3 Practice Test for T and Ready. On this version of the test, this is question number three. It's like two expressions that are equivalent to one-fourth raised to the second power, and that entire expression is raised to the 4x power. Now, this seems like the type of thing where you might look at it and think, I'm just going to circle something and move on. Um, but they do set traps like that a lot on this test. It looks like a really complicated question, but the answer is not really that difficult to find. The ACT works that way too, especially in the science section. It'll look like you have to know a lot of science, but really you just have to know how to read. So be careful about that sort of thing. I'm going to focus on the parts separately. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned, I'm not sure why I didn't. It's like it's my first video ever. Um, when it says select two, if you don't have two answers selected, you're going to get it wrong. We don't 100% know if they give you partial credit. They may say that they do, or they may say that they don't, but we don't know what they're going to do, so just try to get two answers if they ask for two answers. I'm going to look at this part. Oh, well, whoops. Music color, you can actually see. It was good for highlighting, but I'm going to look at this part here, and then I'm going to look at this as almost as if I was one-fourth to the second power was its own thing, and so I'll worry about this part next. This is a traditional fraction being raised to an exponent. There's no sort of, you know, we're not raising an exponent to an exponent. We're just using the parentheses here to indicate that the fraction is being raised by the power. So we just apply the power to both. 1 times 1 is 1, and 4 times 4 is 16. So there you go, 1 16th. Is that one of the answer choices? Oh, wait, we forgot. There's still 4x in it. So then you just tag that on up there, and da-da-da-da, there it is. So the first one, really, all you had to understand how to do was how to raise 4 to the second power and 1 to the second power. Like, don't multiply them. 1 times 2 is not the same as 1 to the second power, and 4 times 2 is not the same as 4 to the second power. Just be prepared to deal with those extremely complicated ideas. And then you just tag this back on. What they're doing is showing you them in different stages of simplification. For the other one, mm, may get a little bit more complicated, but not really. So this one, we have 1 fourth raised to the 4x. You know what they've done here? They've done um, 4 times. No, they've done nothing. They've just like eliminated this altogether. I was thinking they did 4 times 2, but they didn't. Uh, so this would not work. Um, 8x, we'll worry about that. 6x, okay, so now we're getting into this whole thing. This 2 is being raised to the 4x, but the 2 itself is an exponent. So this is like power of powers situation. So we go back to the whole um, order of operations setup. When we did this, when we raised 1 4 to the second power, we were doing an exponent order of operation. That's where we were. But when we get up to where the exponents are, we use the what I call the little brother operation. So it's the hand-me-down ones. So you can't apply this same level of exponent operation to this because it's an exponent itself. So it gets the little brother, you toss it down, and you multiply them. So 2 times 4 gives you that 8x. That's where that comes from. And the only other part we have to worry about is are we going to dive on this situation here and say, oh, 1 16th, that's great. Uh, no, we're not. We haven't applied anything to the 1 fourth yet. We haven't performed this yet. See, we've kept them separate so far. So we need to make sure that we use what's already there, and that's 1 fourth. So this part, not super. Oh, I circled this as if I'd chosen it. What's wrong with me? Um, don't do that yourself, because then you end up getting three answers instead of two, and I highlighted two, and so did they with their bold type. They're not going to waste ink for nothing. So make sure, break the problems that look like this into separate parts and see if you can apply just the basic skills that you probably learned uh, in the last course to see if you can get to the correct answer.